come and bless the Lord in this place. Let's come and magnify the Lord in this place on today. If you're able and you're willing, if you would, lift a hand just to praise God on today. If you're able and you're willing, let's open up our mouths to bless the name of the Lord. If you can't do that, let's stand and just put our hands together for our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, come and magnify the Lord with me in this place because he is good, because he is mighty for brand new mercies on today, for waking us up to experience a brand new joy on today. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name in this place, God. We usher in your presence right now, God. We usher in your presence right now, God. Hallelujah. We lift you up. We say the highest praise, which is hallelujah. All over the building, can we say it? Hallelujah. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Our God deserves the best praise. My God deserves the highest praise. Lift up your voice in this place and say, Hallelujah. 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 Because you deserve it, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We bless you in this place, God. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. You deserve the honor. Hallelujah. And we give it to you on today. Bless the name of the Lord in this place. We welcome you in. We welcome you into this place of worship. If you're viewing online, we welcome you in as well. We are expecting God to do a great thing. Y'all don't look excited. I said, I'm expecting God to do a great thing on today. Hallelujah, because only he can do it. Hallelujah, God, we lift you up in this place. God, we lift you up in this place. We remove ourselves right now, God, so that you can have the glory. We lift up your presence in this place, God. Remove our flesh right now, God. Remove anything that has burdened us down, anything that we're worried about on today. Remove it right now, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Have your way now, God. Hallelujah. Move in this place right now. you to do something on today. Anybody need God to do it on today? Your neighbor doesn't have to know what your duty is, but does anybody expect God to do it on today? God, do it on today. We need you to do it right now. We need you to do it in our households right now, God. We need you to do it in our families right now, God. We need you to do it in our church right now. We need you to do it for that person that's struggling with addiction, God. We need you to do it for the homeless right now, God. We need you to do it for the sick and the shut-in right now, God. We need you to do it, God, for anybody experiencing suicidal thoughts, God. Do it right now, God. God, we need you to do it for those who want to give up and throw in the towel. God, do it right now. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I do it. I need him to do it. I need him to do it and move right now, God. By your strength, God, by your power, God, please do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, all that we can think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We lift it up right now to you, God. We declare and we decree right now, God, that you can do it, that you will do it. Hallelujah. We bless you for it. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to lift him up. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to have faith that he's going to do it. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you for it now, God. I thank you for what you're doing right now, God. Thank you for what you're going to do for us right now, God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to keep saying it until you believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it for us right now, God. Move in this place like never before, God. Set free in this place.
place like never before, God. Release change, God, right now like you never have before. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name in this place, God. We bless your holy name, God. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Anoint us afresh right now, God. Anoint this praise team, Lord. Anoint these musicians right now, God, that we may be able to minister how you want us to minister, God. Not what we want, but what you want, God. Anoint our pastor right now, God, so that you can give him a word for whoever needs it, God for the hearts that need it, for the minds that need it. God, for the renewing and the strengthening of our soul and our spirit. So, God, we are expecting you to do it. We are expecting you to do it. Hallelujah, God. We bless your holy name. We know that you are able to do it, to do all things, through all things. Hallelujah, God. Anybody expecting God to do it? Maybe I didn't say what you were struggling with just a second ago, but you know what that do it is. You know what that do it is. And we stand with you right now. We stand united right now. We stand as a body right now that God will do it. Hallelujah. That God will do it. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, God. those hands together all over this place real quick come on come on you can do better than that if God's ever done anything for you in your life come on and put those hands together come on come on come on Lord you You read 
Bible. Thank you, Father. You read the story about the blind man who could not see. But one day, he heard Jesus passing by. He said, lay your hands, he said, lay your hands, lay your hands on me. He cried, Lord, Lord, do it. Lord, do it. God to do something for you right now. Come on, I said, how many need God to do something for you right now? Come on, if you need God to do something for you, you ought to give God some praise in this place. Because when praises go up, ha, I feel like my daddy, when praises go up, the blessings come down. When praises go up, the blessings come down. Hallelujah. Come on and give God the very best praise you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God's really been good. I said God's really been good. He's been good to me. And I would be wrong not to give God my very best. Hell. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I, serve I serve an extraordinary God. Now, now, look at that neighbor that's on the other side of you because that neighbor ain't acting right real quick. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say it like you really mean it. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I serve an extraordinary God. And if I serve an extraordinary God, I got to give him an extraordinary praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This ain't no ordinary world. This ain't no ordinary song. The God I serve is greater than the ordinary. So I'm going to give him all I have in this moment. Come on, everything. This ain't no ordinary world. No, it ain't, no, it ain't. This ain't no ordinary song. Yeah. The God of service greater. The, the God of service greater than the ordinary. I'm going to give it all. So I'm going to give him all I have in this song. Come on. Come on, help me say. This ain't no ordinary worship. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. This ain't no the God of service greater. The, the God, God of service greater than the ordinary. So I'm going to give it all. So, so I'm going to give it all I have yeah. in this moment. Can y'all say it out there for me real quick? Come on. Hey. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. The God we serve is greater. Than 
So we gonna give him up. Come on back. Come on, help me sing. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. The God I serve is greater. The God I serve is greater than the ordinary. We gonna give him up. Well, let me tell a story about a woman with an issue. Had it 12 long years, didn't know what to do. She heard about a man coming through her town. So she fell to her knees and she crawled on the ground. Here's what she said. If I can only touch from the hem of his God, I'ma give him all I have been doing more. Come on, help me sing. This ain't no ordinary worship. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. This ain't no ordinary song. The God we serve is greater. The God I serve is greater than the ordinary. Let me tell you about a man from Galilee. He healed the lame, caused the blind to see. This man, he was betrayed, crucified for you and me. This man only wanted to make us free. Come on. This ain't no ordinary song. The God I serve is greater. The God I serve is greater than the ordinary. So we gon' give him all. So I'ma give it all I have in this Listen, why not you find three or two or three people and let them know how glad you are that you see them in the house of God. Come on, let's fellowship one another.
Amen. It is so wonderful to see you on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. And certainly for those of uh, you who are joining us online, welcome to our guests who are in the house. We are grateful to have you to be a part of our worship experience here at the Word of Change Ministry. I am excited about what God is doing, how God continues to look past our faults and continue to supply our need. We serve an amazing God. In case nobody ever told you that, we serve an amazing God. A few announcements before we get into the message today. Uh, the leadership workshop will be this Saturday at 10 a.m. at the New Trinity Baptist Church. If you want to be a part of that, Please sign the list. There is uh, 10 slots that are available that the church will sponsor. There's room if you want to come and just learn more and be better equipped to do the work God has called us to do. So it should be out there in the vestibule. Please sign up. Next, next Sunday is the last Sunday of Black History uh, Month. And so we're going to ask if you have it, wear your African attire. If you don't, wear whatever you can just show up but those who do have african attire please wear that next sunday and also next saturday at 4 p.m we'll have our soul food feast i am looking forward to that and maybe some of you can join me and, and try to go light during the week so you can show out on saturday <laughs> so we're we're gonna have a spread and so if you want to cook something or if you want to serve somehow, please see Miss Onitha. Miss Onitha, wave your hand there. <clears throat> you want to cook a dish, bring that dish. Please let her know so we'll know what we have. But there will be plenty of food. Please feel free to bring your family members. Uh, bring your enemy. Bring your supervisor. You never know what God can do with him over a meal. And so it's going to be at the Rock Building right there in front of the Y downtown. Same place we had our... Christmas party. If you're online and you're listening, you're a friend of the Word of Change, please feel free to come out at 4 p.m. next Saturday. I also want to thank our men uh, for the soup a bowl Sunday. Uh, amazing soup for those who stayed around in fellowship, and we were able to raise $350. And I personally delivered that check over to uh, the soup kitchen uh, and gave it to Miss Salters myself. She was very appreciative. And so we are going to do that every year. And hopefully every year the amount that we give gets larger and larger that we can aid in feeding those who don't have food. Also, uh, we're trying to update our birthday list. So please see Miss Gail. Dr. Carson here. She has a list going around. Uh, put your name and your birth date. If you don't want to put your year down, that's cool in the game. <laughs> we, we don't need to know how old you are. We just want to know when your day comes so we can celebrate you. So we got something working in the mix where we'll be able to celebrate you a little more uh, coming. And so please get your name on that list. Grab your Bibles if you would. Grab your Bibles if you would. Um, as we all stand, turn with me to the Song of Solomon, the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, the Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Um, I think this is probably the first time I'm preaching out of the Song of Solomon, maybe the first or second time, Song of Solomon, chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading at verse 5, and we'll read verse 5 and 6. I'll be reading uh, from the New American Standard Bible, the New American Standard Bible, but you can follow along with whatever translation you have. Listen, uh, as Solomon writes, I am black and beautiful. You daughters of Jerusalem like the tents of Kedar. Like the curtains of Solomon, do not stare at me because I am dark. For the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me caretaker of the vineyards. 
but I have not taken care of my own vineyard. I am black and beautiful. You may be seated as you're sitting. I want to talk to you from the subject, unapologetically black. Unapologetically black. In the 1940s, there were some brilliant black psychologists by the name of Kenneth and Mamie Clark. They conducted a series of experiments known as the Dahl Test. The study was trying to figure out the psychological effect of segregation and racism on African American children and also trying to find out a child's racial perception. In other words, how they see themselves. And so they had four dolls, and the difference in the dolls was just the color. They had two black, they had two white. And they would bring kids, both white and black, and ask them a list of questions. Questions like, who is the smart doll? Who's the dumb doll? Who is the pretty doll? Who's the ugly doll? Which doll you think is a criminal? Which doll you think would be successful? Each child, both black and white, attributed all the negative stuff to the black doll. And we think that maybe that's been so long ago that we don't view ourselves in the right light. Well, the, the truth is we still don't see ourselves like we should. But please understand me, there is a reason for that. That it was intentional. Because for years it was pumped on our television that we were only slaves, buffoons, gangsters. It, we weren't even a superhero. That's why we went crazy with Wakanda forever. We finally got a real superhero that was black. And so it has been told to us that we are nothing, that we are less than, that, that black is broken, black is evil, black is this, and black is that. And so it was intentional because they had to look at us as less than human to treat us worse than they did a dog. Think about this, 90%, maybe 95% of words that have black attached to it is negative. Let me run some down to you. Black hole, black ball, black eyes, black well, black night, black magic, black face, black lips, black eye, black sheep, black male, black hair. Everything that's black attached to it, it seems negative. So why is this a surprise when they say black people? They assume that there's something negative about us. I come to tell you that you are not the descendants of slaves. You are the descendants of kings and queens. That when they came and stole us from Africa, we were not crazy people running in the jungle naked. No, we had a civilization. We had our own religion. We had our own government. We had our own cities that we had built. I have you to believe that your history stops when you came to this place as slaves. No, you got to get your mind right because this view of us still exists. This bias against us, it still exists. It exists in every system in this country. Medicine, housing, education, and I can go on and on how they view us in this negative light, even theology. They don't see us as God see us. Theology is tainted somewhat. Because think about that most of your commentaries that you read were written by old white men and some of them were slave owners. While they were writing commentaries and when they were translating scripture, we were still picking cotton. And so they couldn't view us how God view us, even in the text that I read this morning. And I intentionally chose the New American 
standard Bible because they got it right. Most of the other translation didn't get it right because if you read it, King James and New King James, it says, I'm black but beautiful. As, as to say that her blackness was something that was negative, that there's no way that she could be black and beautiful. No, no, they got it right right here. She's black and beautiful. As a matter of fact, her blackness is what makes her beautiful. Her blackness does not take away from who she is. Her blackness is what makes her who she is. And check this out. Solomon has 700 wives and 300 concubines. But look who he writing about. Y'all, some, some sisters should have jumped right there and ran around this church. He got 700 wives, 300 girlfriends, and this is the one that he writes to and talks about how much he loves her and how her body and her smell and her touch grabs him and controls him because can't nobody do you like a sister. You want me to tell you something? <laughs> I don't have no problem with a white sister, but the only thing she could do is show me to a black sister. I love her smell. I love her shape. I love her touch. I love the texture of who she is. So they couldn't handle that. There's no way. There's no way God is saying in scripture that she's black and beautiful. But yeah, that's what the text says, that she's black and beautiful. Beautiful, But here's the thing I love about this. As her and Solomon are having this dialogue, she says in verse 6, she says, don't stare at me because I'm dark. Then she goes on to say and says, my mother's sons were angry with me. Can I tell you right now, we have some mother's sons that's angry with us. Why are you angry at me? Simply because I'm black. You, you, you got issues with me. You don't even know me. Just the mere fact that my skin is different from yours. You angry with me. But I, I love the sister in this text. She's like, I don't find my validation in your eyes. I don't need affirmations from you to tell me that I'm beautiful. I'm looking in the eyes of my lover, and as long as my lover think I'm all that in a bag of chips, who cares what you say? And I come to tell you, you need to look at yourself in the eyes of the lover of your soul. How does Jesus see you? Quit worrying about how people see you and how people don't think you're this and people don't think you that. What does God say about you? Let me run it down for you since you don't know. He says you are a holy nation. You are special possession. You're sons and daughters of God. You're a child of God, friend of God, image of God. You are chosen people, royal priesthood. You're the light of the world, the salt of the world. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're blessed and highly favored. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're joined ass with Christ Jesus. I am what God said that I am. And if you can't handle that, so be it. I am what God said that I am. It does not matter if you can't appreciate the beauty of who God created me to be, but that's who I am. And I'm unapologetically black and for too far too long we have turned down our blackness to make white folk comfortable y'all don't like it because some of you are guilty of it yeah we we're turned down our blackness we 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 will put on larger clothes because you don't want them to feel offended because your hips are so big and so you have to dress in a particular way. They want you to cut your hair off and don't wear your hair a certain way because it don't look professional where the devil is a liar. Who are you to tell me who I am? And I understand that we're living in this country and the dominant race, the dominant race, the white race, they're not dominant because they're better. They're just dominant because they possess the power and the resource. But here's the thing, 
you don't ever turn your blackness down. Yeah. Yeah, like Bernie Mac says, if I show you my black, this whole room will go dark. I shouldn't have went there, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> learn, learn, how, learn how to appreciate your blackness. Teach your kids your blackness. Teach them how to enjoy and how to love their culture and appreciate their culture because without us, this world would be a very bland, dull place. And they talk about how bad we are, but yet you've been stealing our culture since we've been here. You've been stealing our music. You've been stealing our hairstyle. You've been stealing how we look. Listen, black women got to cut stuff down and they got to buy stuff to put it on. And you think... She... She says, she says, my brothers, my brothers put me out to work the vineyard and I haven't worked my own vineyard. Here's what she's saying. Here's what she's saying. She says, I've spent so much of my life serving others. Mm, I want to help somebody. I want to help a sister. I, I've spent so much of my life serving others and, and giving to others and raising other people's children and raising my children and taking care of my husband and doing this and doing this that I forgot about my own vineyard. There's some sisters in here right now. You need to carve out some me time. You need to shut some stuff down. You need to slip away some way and you need to get poured back into because believe it or not, I know I catch hell as a black man, but I know you will call plenty hell as a black woman in this place we call the yet to be United States of America. She says, I hadn't worked on my own vineyard. When's the last time you planted something in your own vineyard? Oh, okay, what I'm saying is, when is the last time you did something just for you? When is the last time that, that you, you made it a day about you? I mean, man, you, you at the house by yourself, you in a ring, you a hot bath, got your bubbles, got your candles, got your whatever you're drinking, and you got your music playing, and you just want to woo-sigh for a little while. Can I tell you? That most of you who don't do that, you feel guilty even at the thought of it. If I, if, if I ain't there, what's going to happen to you? If I ain't there, what, what's going to Listen, they'll survive. Amen. They will survive. Your husband will survive. Amen. There is restaurants on every corner. He will survive. <laughs> she said, I haven't haven't taken care of my own vineyard. But I love her because she, she's found someone. Mm, she's found someone who can appreciate her beauty because of who she is. Oh, man, I wish, I, I wish somebody here could help me preach this thing. When, when you find someone who makes you beautiful and, and all of the negative things that people said about you when you are in their presence, it just melts off of you because it does not matter what the world say. Up in this house, I am a dime piece. Up in this house, I am the finest thing that walk these halls. It's something when you're able to see the reflection of yourself in the eyes of the one that loves you. to see that with Jesus. When, when he looks at you, he does not look at your flaws. He does not look at your failures. He does not look at your mess up. He looks at the fact that even though you have been through hell, you're still here. Even though you've been through all of that, you still love him. You still trust him. You still believe him. He loves you. And when you learn to get your affirmation from God and from your mirror. 
It's a different thing. Once you lock that down in your life, you, it, it don't matter about the secondhand talk, dig it. It don't matter about what the corners are saying. I know what the mirror said. Oh, I wish I had somebody. The mirror told me, boy, I'm like a piece of pork chop among a pile of hungry dogs. The mirror told me I'm smooth like butter. The mirror told me the black of the berry, the sweet of the... <laughs> I am unapologetically black. I make no excuses for it. That if you invite me to be on your board, you are inviting me as a black man and all of my experience and all of my ups and downs and all of my fears and anxieties and all of my successes come with me. And I'm not going to come and be a part because I am the only black in the room that I'm going to dummy down and code switch. No, I, I, I believe God has called me to make some folk uncomfortable. Because I've been uncomfortable for a long time in America. So every now and then when I get the opportunity to flex my blackness, In my mind, I'm saying this, this is a black moment. And in my mind, they don't see it, but I, I hit one of these before I go into the meeting. Wakanda forever. Let's go. I, here's the thing. I, I, I only get to preach like this once a year. For the shortest month of the year to encourage you to feel good about who you are because you don't get it enough because you didn't find you in many of the textbooks when some of you went to school. You weren't there. You, you weren't on television with most of us in here 40 and over when we grew up. We weren't on television. Here I am thinking about it. I used to love the Dukes of Hazard. I ain't had no other choice. One then us to look at Dukes of Hazard, Gilligan Island. And man, if somebody said, and, and my wife, I said, I wasn't going to tell your business no more, so I'm not going to do it. Just this one. <laughs> my, my, my wife said she didn't like good times. And I understand why. But, but good times were, were speaking to us. Man, some of us know what it was try, trying to get over and every time it seems like you, you're getting one step ahead, something comes and pushes you two steps back. But guess what? We made it. We, we endured it. And mama figured out how to make things work. And there's some mother in here, you understand that not having eggs don't stop you from cooking. Not having milk don't stop you from eating cereal. I wish I had somebody up in here. Somebody know about a jam sandwich. When you, you take two slices of bread and you just jam them together. But we survive. I had this talk with God. I had this talk with God this morning as I was walking. I said, God. It's strange sometimes for me as I think about it how black people still love you. How, how black people still worship you because when we were being slaughtered and hung and lynched in the city courts, many of those white faces were white Christians. That here I am dying, saying, Jesus, help me. And they celebrate and think they're doing Jesus' work. I know it's heavy, but it's real. But in spite of all of that, don't nobody worship God like people of color. I had a friend of mine, I had a friend of mine, a white pastor. And he said to me, he says, he says, Belton, man, Oh, man, I, I enjoy how y'all worship and, and, and how you preach. He said, man, I don't mind being able to do it. I said, you never do it. 
I said, because that preaching and that worship come from a place that you have never experienced. We bring into worship our pain and our anxiety and our fears and our hurts and we leave it at the altar when we lifting up our hands. We're trusting God to make a way out of no way. And I come to tell somebody, this God that we serve, he's done it. And so I'm unapologetically black. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I was in my preparation for this message. I wanted, I wanted to get a poem uh, that kind of speak to who we are as a people. And as I was searching uh, the internet, there was some there were some amazing poets out there, and those who had great spoken word, but they really did not reach what I really wanted to say. And so I cut the computer off and picked the pencil up. And, and I, I said, well, if, if they can't say it, maybe I need to say it. So l let me give it to you. You'll be the first to hear it other than my wife, unapologetically black by yours truly. Uh, are you ready for it? Touch a neighbor and say, hold on, we going for a ride. Uh, unapologetically black. Black is beautiful. It's dark skin, light skin, red bone, and high yellow. It's the boardroom, courtroom, class red, and on the corner with the fellows. It's long hair, no hair, nappy hair, straight hair, wee braids, and dreadlocks. It's classical music, soul, jazz, gospel, pop, country, blues, and hip hop. It's Whitney, Aretha, Luther, Prince, Michael, Biggie, and Tupac. Black is fried chicken, ham hocks, cornbread, chitlins, and expensive caviar. It's pushing a Mercedes Benz, Jaguar, Lexus, hoopty, 20 inch rims on the car. It's diamond in the back, sun rooftop. Digging in the scene with the gangster lean is easy like Sunday morning. Black is a comedy, a drama, horror, western, and action. It's Danzea, Viola, Will Smith, and Samuel L. Jackson. It's Black Lives Matter, Malcolm, Martin, Mega, and Marcus Garvey. You so crazy. D. Hell Hughley, Cedric, Bernie Mac, and Steve Harvey. Black is is the White House, your house, crack house, and God's house. It's worship on Sunday morning with the lifting of hands. It's twerking on Friday night with the spinning of bands. It's preaching on the word of God with the laying of hands. Black is mother, Gigi, Nana, Medea, and Big Mama. It's backyard parties, cookout, fish fries, and family drama. It's dominoes, poker, spades, tonk, and bid whiz. It's the Obama's peanut pookie and baby kids. Black is love. It's loud. It's soft. It's how we talk. It's thick lips, wide hips, smooth thighs is even in our walk. Black is strong, powerful, majestic, and deep as the ocean and sea. Black is unapologetically you and unapologetically me. Stand, let's go. Stand all over the house. Somebody say, I'm not going to make apologies. I am what I am. I am who God say that I am. You don't have to like it, but you better respect it. You don't have to agree with it, but you better not touch it. <laughs> Listen, the altar is open. Strange altar call, but if you just want to thank God for making you who you are, with all your flaws, all your failures, all your insecurities, all your mess ups. But God, in spite of it all, God, I wouldn't want to be nobody but me. For God, I am fearfully 
and wonderfully made. I am the Imago Dei. I'm made in the image and likeness of God. When God reached down into the dirt to make man, he didn't reach in the sand. He reached in that deep, dark, black, rich soil. And he formed us. And then he breathed his life in us. So regardless of what someone else has said, you're not a mistake. You're not flawed. You're not less than. You're everything that God wanted you to be. Who gives anybody else the right to define your beauty? Beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. So don't try to continue to press yourself into a mold that's not you. Some of us are we're not created to be side zeros. Some of us were created to be some fine behind 22s. It ain't nothing wrong with it. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Won't he do it? Father, we thank you. We thank you that a, a God like you can make a being like me. And God, I know that we are your masterpieces. You only make one of all of us. I don't have nobody else fingerprint. I don't have nobody else DNA. God, you made me and you, you decided who I would be. As the prophet Jeremiah says, listen, you knew me. And you called me in my mother's belly to be a prophet to the nations. And none of us here, God, are by our accidents. We're here on purpose for a purpose. And God, may your people be encouraged today. May they learn to look back to their creator for their affirmation, for their validation. God, may they, may they go back to the one who formed them. But God, I know that when you, when you see them, you see them through eyes of love. And so God, we thank you. But God, I pray for the one who, who yet struggles with insecurity. I pray God that they would leave it here today. I pray that you would silence the wicked voices of the past. Those voices who told them that they were ugly, that they were stupid that they would never be anything, that they would be just like their daddy. God, may you silence that voice. And may they hear your word today that you love them just for them. God, forgive us for pursuing things other than you. Forgive us, God, for trying to do things to feel better instead of bringing our anxiety to you. Cleanse us, God. Heal your people now. Set them free. Let them see the value in themselves like you see. May they from this day forward never allow someone to abuse them. Never allow someone to treat them less than what God you have said about them. May they learn how to walk in a new boldness. May they learn how to walk in a new confidence. Knowing that they are the creation of God. That they are the image bearers of God. 
give them that courage. For God, you said, 1 Timothy 1 and 7, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. May this, may this be the life of your people. May they walk in that power. May they walk in that boldness. May they operate out of that love and may their minds be renewed. Thank you, God. Now, God, I pray you bless the hands that have given, the hands that shall give. Bless what we receive, God, break it and multiply it, that we may be able to continue to do your will now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of your precious Holy Spirit, rest your and abide on each and every one of us henceforth now and forevermore. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing Sunday. Hug somebody before you leave and tell them you're beautiful.